In this video, I'm going to paint some human barbarians and a planetar for Dungeons and Dragons. Good day or night to you, welcome to the Gaming Town. If you don't already know, Nolzer's Marvelous Miniatures, or as I like to call it, Nmm, is a line of unpainted, pre-primed Dungeons and Dragons models from WizKids. The Nolzer's line features both monsters and player character minis. Today, I am painting one of the male human barbarian packs. There are other human barbarians in the Nolzer's line, but I am painting the one that looks like Conan. <laughs> Usually, these player character packs contain two miniatures depicting the same character with variation in stance, clothing, and weapons. This pack comes with three miniatures if you count the spirit that is supposed to attach to one of the barbarian's bases. I will also be painting the planetar. It is an awesome, large-sized angel. Let's start with the barbarians. This barbarian is wearing no armor and very little clothing. With this much exposed skin, it makes sense to start painting the model with the skin color. I chose this warm skin tone. Arnold Schwarzenegger's Conan the Barbarian has this very suntanned, warm skin, and I want to replicate that on these miniatures. Another big feature of the model is the fur. The back of the package has a colored visualization of the model. It is a take on how one might color this miniature. I like the fur in that picture, but I want it a little darker. I painted the fur skirt and the trim on his boots and armbands a drab brown. Those fantasy Viking helmets make me want to paint their long braided hair bright blonde. I settled on a sort of light yellow bone or eggshell color. You can see that as I am painting, I am working from the features with large surface area toward the smaller details. I have found this to be a solid strategy for painting miniatures. Now it is time for a dark brown paint. I want to color these belts like dark leather. The armbands, helmet, handle of the battle axe, and the boots will all get a coat of this brown. The colors so far have been on the lighter end, so this will add some much needed contrast. This model wields a primitive cudgel or maybe pick with what looks like a bone handle. I chose a bright white to make the handle look like bleached bone. The horns on the helmets are getting a coat of light brown. The battle axe on one of these guys has a looped strap on the end and a ribbed surface for extra handling. I painted these light brown as well. Coming back to the cudgel on the other model, I painted the head of the weapon light gray like stone and the straps fastening it to the handle light brown. Barbarians are not known to be the brightest characters, but they understand there is value in shiny things. These models have some metallic features. These necklaces are getting a coat of a dull brass. This is the same color I used on Air 2 the Baylor's metal details for the Legend of Drizzt board game. This is a mix of bright gold and dark bronze paint. I also decided to paint this animal head design on the cudgel metallic too. The belt and helmet are studded. These studs get a few jabs of dark gunmetal. The head of the battle axe also gets a coat of this color. Barbarians are crude and rugged. This dark gunmetal on the axe feels more fitting than silver. Let's take a look at the base. I want the ground to be a warm orange-brown rock, like a kind of desert setting. I coated it with this orange-brown paint. Later on I tried making a few changes to it, but they didn't go right, so I just repainted it this flat color. At this point, the model itself is fully coated in color, but we are not done yet. I want to give this a few subtle highlights. The light brown I have been using is just the right color to highlight the furs. Dry brushing adds some variation in color. 
between the outer surface and the inner depths of the fur. These raging muscle men have a lot of skin showing, so I might as well try to highlight their skin. I applied an even more careful dry brushing of a lighter skin color over their muscles. Something as subtle as this should actually be done after the washes, but this gave me some good practice. I ended up reapplying this after the wash. Once the barbarians were fully dry, I gave them both a dark brown wash. I found that this gave the muscles some nice warm shading. On some of the other details, it kind of looks like dirt, which is fitting for these wild warriors. The barbarians are done, but we cannot forget about the spirit. It is transparent plastic, so I can try to tint it a certain color. I ended up going for a crimson tint to symbolize rage. A healthy dose of watered down paint like I'm using will work in a pinch, but there are paints and inks which should stain transparent plastic with better results. Could paint this other colors for different symbolic flavors. I'm thinking green for nature, light blue for something more spectral and cold, or yellow for a holy radiant guardian. This is one supernatural guardian down. Now we are off to the planetar. This model has a little too much extra plastic on the mold lines for my taste. I usually do not concern myself with these, but I am trying to be a better miniature painter, and these slender fins are too noticeable. A few careful slices with an X-Acto knife will clean up these surfaces. I will be painting this angel almost exactly like the color visualization on the back of the packaging. I'm starting with the wings and cloth skirt. It will be a clean angelic white. I like the feather texturing on the wings and these two flailing bits of cloth from the skirt. I mix some green and light blue to make teal paint for the planetar's skin. This is one of the things I like about this creature. Some angels in D&D look like humans with wings, but celestials like the planetar emphasize the fact that these are supernatural beings, alien to the material plane. That teal skin and those bright, solid white eyes make them feel inhuman and otherworldly. This model wears a few pieces of armor. I could paint them gold, but I think that dull brass from the Barbarians would work better. The bracers, greaves, sandals, and weapon hilt get a careful coat of this color. This is looking good. It works in a similar way as the dark brown leather did on the Barbarians. The dull brass contrasts the lighter features. Painting the sandals was a little nerve-wracking as I really did not want to get any of this color on the translucent air plume. To complete the sword, I am giving the blade a coat of silver. The planetar should definitely have a brighter, cleaner blade than the barbarians. I'm going with a light gray for the base. I like to imagine this celestial living on a heavenly beach of smooth white and gray pebbles. A cool, yet peaceful domain. Applying a wash to this model is going to be a bit tricky. Most miniatures I paint are darker, so they can get away with a simple black or brown wash. This model has some white details, so the wash needs to be much lighter. I thinned down the dark brown wash with distilled water and quickly applied it to the entire model. The brown in this wash gives the wings and cloth skirt some warmer shadows than a black or gray wash. I ended up applying two coats. 
In this case, it is better for the wash to not be dark enough, rather than overpower the white details. The last detail is a highlight on the skin. I took what I learned from the barbarians and held off on doing this step until after the wash. I'm using a faint dry brush of light shadow blue to highlight the teal skin. This step will emphasize the muscular physique of the planetar. And with that, this celestial is done. Time for the results. The barbarians came out great. The highlights and wash did their job at emphasizing the depth, the fur and muscles. I also like how the bright details on the cudgel and hair stand out from the rest of the miniature. These two are great minis for someone who wants to run a Conan the Barbarian style character. That orange brown base I painted looks like rusty Martian dirt. They would easily find play in an apocalyptic desert setting like Dark Sun. Usually, the player character packs in Nolzer's line have more variation between the two minis, but I can see why these two are so close in appearance. Barbarians don't wear much armor, so there's no variation there, and this clothing is pretty iconic. The change in weapons is good though. They look so similar that, as a dungeon master, I want to deploy them as a pair of twin warriors for an encounter. Maybe they are a pair of bounty hunting twins, or maybe they are the twin guardians of a holy burial mound. The spirit came out okay. The watered down paint acted as a wash and gathered in the recesses, revealing the barbarian spirit's chiseled features. This model is meant to attach to the base of the barbarian that is pointing the cudgel, but I'm going to base it separately so I can use it on its own. I believe this model is meant to represent the spirit of the ancestral guardian primal path in Xanathar's Guide to Everything. A player using this barbarian set could swap in the mini with the spirit when they activate their ancestral spirit abilities. Separately based, this model could represent a spectral enemy or maybe spiritual effects created by the players. I would use this for when someone casts Guardian of Faith, Spiritual Weapon, or Guardian Spirits. The Planetar itself is an awesome model. I like how it is posed, ascending to flight with those wings outstretched. The color scheme is also great. I like the white wings paired with the teal skin. This mini kind of looks like Dr. Manhattan with wings and the decency to put a towel on. Working on these minis allowed me to practice a few things that are still rather new to me as a miniature painter. The light wash over white details was a situation that I have had little success with in the past. I was able to sort of pull it off here, but there are a few tide marks on the cloth skirt. I have very little experience in highlighting the skin of models. I'm pleased with how it came out on the planetar. In fact, I decided to paint these minis together because both the Barbarians and the Planetar are muscular with plenty of exposed skin. They kind of go together. The Barbarians look like warriors of Valhalla, and the Planetar looks like their angelic captain. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like. If you did not, then tell me why. I'm always looking for ways to improve. If you want to see more content, then shout to the heavens until your ancestral spirits awaken, and then gracefully press the subscribe button. Before the planetar comes down from the clouds to see who's making all that noise. Anyway, I need to go varnish these miniatures. Thank you for watching, and until next time, keep making and keep playing. Have a good one. Ah, 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 ah.